A couple great questions in there. Are you happy with your job? Kind of. <laughs> what is going on, all you lovely people out there? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Michael Hora, and this is a lovely penguin. And guys, you asked for a Q&A section of video, I guess, or just a Q&A video. So we're doing it. We're doing it right now. So these are questions regarding my career, regarding doing reaction videos, and then also, I don't know, but there might be some personal questions in there as well. I'm not afraid of it. We're not going to go in any certain order. I'm just going to go straight on down the list. All right. So also, if I pronounce your name wrong, I am sorry. Yuka Finks says... Of the projects you've worked on so far as a set dresser or doing something else, which one is your favorite and why? So I think that my favorite builds that I've done so far have to all be with Zach King. I've worked as a set dresser and a carpenter for him on multiple different projects. I've even been in some of his videos as well. But I think one of the coolest things that we built was an Ames room. Now, an Ames room is one of those rooms where if you go and stand on one side of the room, you look really little. And then on the other side, if you walk across, you look gigantic. And we built one of those from scratch that we made it into a bedroom. And if I can find a quick little clip from Zach, I'm going to put it in right now that we're actually inside a really funky room. Now, if I go over here, I'm the one that shrinks. Hopefully I had a clip. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that is an Ames room. It's really a really cool visual perspective trick and it makes for a really cool, cool little video. We also did a really cool one where we made a pool table into a pool where you could swim in. And we had Zach fall into it when he was playing. He was actually playing me in pool, which is also kind of cool. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that was a that was a fun fun video as well. Definitely, definitely the most interesting projects because he really pushes the limits of what I can and cannot build. You know, so a lot of the times they'll come to me with a question like, "Hey, could you make this?" And I say, "I could try." <laughs> So that's probably the most fun, I'd say. So probably probably my favorite ones thus far. Also, it's like the one of the few ones I can actually talk about. <laughs> All right, next question. Nara Miri asked, do you have any pets? And if yes, what kind of pet? Also, how do you become a set dresser? It's an unusual job after all, but a great one. Thanks. <laughs> so I personally do not own any pets. However, my roommate Nathan, he has a cat named Powder. Here's a clip. So I taught Powder a trick. <laughs> oh, you gotta love it. She still hasn't gotten around the neck yet, but at least she got the cuddles. Right? Right? Aww. Pretty awesome cat. She's basically like a dog. Uh, I'm not really a big cat person, but I love this cat in particular. She's the best. Then also my mom, she has a dog as well. Her name is Luna. She's a Newfoundland and she is a gigantic little baby. I have a picture with her right here. <laughs> I love that dog to death too. I lived with them for just a little bit, so I kind of consider her my pet even though I don't live near her. She's in New York, I'm in California. Then how did you become a set dresser? So this one's kind of a long story, I guess, but I'll try to wrap it up as quickly as I can here. When I first moved out to Los Angeles, I came out here to be an actor, right? And uh, I made a few friends. I didn't know anybody when I first got here, but I made some friends and some of them were actors, some of them aren't. And one of the ones that was an actor was going to a school called the American Film Institute. And at that school, there was some projects that some of the students were doing. And uh, 
one of her friends was producing a, a, a short film and their art department dropped on them last minute the day before the build day. So my friend asked me if I could come on out. She said, hey, listen, if you do this, then you're going to make great connections with future directors and producers of the of the future film industry. And it's going to be a really good thing if you come and do it. And at the time, I wasn't working all that much. I drove for Uber. I was working at a movie theater and whatnot. And I decided, you know what? Why not? So I volunteered. I did four days, four 12-hour days. And they just said, hey, can you paint? I said, yes. They said, hey, can you cut wood? I said, yes. Do you have a miter saw? And the guy looked at me like I was a saint or something. And then he said, yeah, we have one right outside. You can cut the wood there. And uh, after a little bit of doing this, all this work and stuff, the, the art director that they did pick up for the shoot was like, man, have you done this before? Like, you just know all the things that we need to do. And I told him, I said, no, I've never, I've never done art for any sort of productions or anything like this. But a lot of this is really similar to work that I have done when I worked for my dad. My dad was a, is a, or he was a commercial contractor in New York City. So we did a lot of different work and I worked on and off for him for about 15 years. So a lot of it was construction stuff. And then we also did a good amount of construction at my house that I grew up in. So I was constantly around power tools and stuff. So it wasn't too foreign to me. So I knew what to do. I knew how to do things. And a lot of the other art PAs that are out there don't really know what they're doing. So for me, it was really easy for people to pick me up and want to work with me because I kind of knew what to do. They just say, hey, can you do this? And I say, yep, and I go and do it. They didn't have to ask twice. Plus, I also like to joke around and say that uh, I have two different attitudes that are really dangerous when it comes to working. And that's one, I am a New Yorker. So I got that New York mentality of go, 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 get it done, get it fast, and do it right. And secondly, I have the immigrant mentality because my dad is from Ireland and then my mom, her parents were from Scotland. So we have that undesirable need to get things done quickly and then also to do them to the best of our abilities and show that we can do it the best so that people want to work with us and that we will be able to continue to work. So mixing those two personalities together makes for a really monster of a human uh, in terms of work ethic. So people definitely have started to hire me on it was a slow burn at start it's basically word of mouth it's who you know i have never applied for a single job <laughs> in terms of the art department sometimes i do pa work as well just a production assistant uh just to fill the space and make some money and um yeah that's how i kind of got into it and then the more i worked the more people would pass my name around to the point where I start getting bigger jobs and I would start to become a set dresser and then I got to be a carpenter and then I've now and most recently I've been doing a lot more art directing as well and as you can imagine as you kind of move your way up the the prices kind of increase of how much money you get paid which is nice as well next question that was a really good question by the way thanks Nara next question this one is from I want to say Ira or Ira Kenyon. This question has been killing me since you first mentioned it. And I apologize if you have already answered this a lot. You've said a couple of times that you've met sugar before. And I was wondering if there is any story that goes along with that, which we may hear. Also, what is your favorite genre of music? Well, in regards to that first question, I can't say too much. I only mentioned that I did meet him at one point. I did sign an NDA, so I can't go on to share any of the work that we did, but I can say I did work and he happened to be around. <laughs> I hope I'm not going to get in trouble for saying that. I know, I know, I know. I knew I wasn't going to really be able to say anything about it, but I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a tease. I think it's super funny. And uh, also, it's just funny too, because I, I had no idea when I met him. I didn't even know who he was. <laughs> <laughs> so favorite genre of music that is a super super tough one i mean if i really wanted to go basic i would just say rock music because that entails so many different types of rock music 
Um, I used to be really into heavy music, like screamo and and hardcore, or like uh, alternative. I guess I'd say alternative rock is probably my favorite because that still encompasses a pretty wide variety while also narrowing down the search just a little bit. I don't know. But thanks for the question. That's awesome. Next question. Kirazalia. Hopefully I said that correct. If I remember correctly, you said in the video that the genres you used to be the most into were punk, emo, and metal. Who was your favorite groups or artists, and what are some songs that you love that you would recommend? Oh my gosh. Yeah, well, first off, I... You're right. I did love. I was definitely into the emo and punk scene a little bit more than I was into metal. But favorite artists. Hmm. All right. So one of my top all time favorite artists is August Burns Red. And my favorite song from them is probably a song called Whitewashed. It's very heavy, very screaming, very awesome, really cool song. They have great messages in their songs as well. So if you're into that kind of stuff, they do have that. There's not really any singing in it. It's mainly all screaming. So if you're going to check out August Burns Red, definitely check them out. In terms of like the emo stuff, I would say... So I really loved Fall Out Boy's first album. It was kind of before they became a little bit more poppy. They were just a lot more punk then. It was uh, Take This to Your Grave, and I think my favorite song off of it was probably Saturday. Really awesome, really great. Obviously, I like My Chemical Romance. I mean, I don't, I don't know if you need a suggestion for that. I'm, I'm Not Okay is probably the best one, I'd say. I think that one's such a dynamic song. Say Anything, also a really amazing band. If you haven't checked them out, they're freaking stellar. I Want to Know Your Plans is probably one of my favorite songs from them. It's one of their later songs. Really sick. Really cute song as well. Oh, 311. They weren't in that, that genre, but they were the first band I ever saw in concert. Chiodos, also another one. There's No Penguins in Alaska. You should check that song out. That was probably my favorite one from them. Head Automatica. They have so many good songs, but Beating Heart Baby is like my favorite one from them for sure. Panic at the Disco. I liked almost all their songs off of their first album. Paramore. Emergency. The song Emergency or Pressure. No, Pressure. Pressure is definitely my favorite Paramore song of all time. It's also the first song I ever heard from them. But I mean, if you were in like high school, middle school time and you didn't have a crush on Haley Williams, you're crazy. Taking Back Sunday, of course, if you haven't checked them out, they are one of like the freaking OGs in that whole entire scene. Liar is definitely the go-to song for them. I'm basically just stating all the famous songs <laughs> that I know. Green Day as well, of course. I mean, if you if you weren't listening to like, you know, Basket Case or anything like that, you're silly goose. I don't know if System of a Down kind of falls in it. I guess it would probably be metal. But uh, yeah, I love Toxicity. I have the whole entire song memorized. I mean, all their songs are freaking st stellar, so I loved all of them. Yeah, I think I said Reliant K was really sick. I really liked a lot of their songs. I mean, I I so hate Consequences. Probably my favorite one. Under Oath. Under Oath. Another amazing freaking freaking album. And I honestly check out anything from Define the Great Lines. They're gonna be more on like the metal side of things. They're a bit more screamo and all that kind of stuff. A Day to Remember. We loved them. They have friggin' all all these great songs. They actually do a really awesome cover of Since You've Been Gone. So check that out if you haven't. That's a really funny song. <laughs> Not funny, but you know what I mean. It's it's funny to hear them sing it. Kill Such Engage, also another one that kind of I guess would fall more towards metal. My my favorite song is probably B1. I think that one's a really cool song. So check that one out too. I If you guys want more recommendations, by all means, go ahead and let me know. I will try to give you some. Or I can even react to some of their videos because most of them I don't really think I've watched the videos for. So we will see. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, go ahead and check out all those songs. Thanks for the question. Let us keep on moving to the next question. 
Where do you take your inspiration from while doing your work, being a set dresser, I mean? And do you think there's a specific thing that you like to do, talking about work, that is like your brand, a detail you like to add or a pattern? And that was a question from Isabel Mello. <clears throat> no. <laughs> no, no, no. We're, uh, I, I don't really put too many personal touches on things, mainly because you're being paid to make it look exactly the way they want you to make it look. There's not that much time where you get to put your own artistic flair on things. So typically, no, I do not have anything that I'm doing in this, I mainly am just taking the inspiration of the production designer and I'm making it come into fruition. So I don't particularly do anything necessarily that's not being told to me, if that makes sense. It's not super creative work, but I mean, every once in a while you get to do something. So one of the things that we actually have to do sometimes is when there's like a lot of art pictures in a scene, sometimes it's cheaper to just have somebody draw them yourself. So that's the only time that I really get to, I guess, express my creativity because it doesn't really matter what you put in there. It just needs to kind of look right. So there was a short film that I did once where they were looking for like a postmodern type art pieces. So I just drew flowers. Personally, I don't know why. I guess I guess it's probably because of my mom. I like to draw roses. I think drawing like a singular rose is really like a fun and easy thing to draw. So I will almost always pick a rose as a flower that I will draw if I am required to draw something. Uh, mainly because I drew one for my mom for her birthday one year. Like I drew, I made her a card rather than going out to buy one. And I will say I was definitely too old to be drawing on a card and stuff, but I was just really broke at the time. Plus I've been working on drawing a bit. So my artistic abilities were just getting a little bit better. So I'm not saying I'm any good at it in fairness. I was uh, compared to, to my, my sister and my dad, they both were, were artists that like i mean my my stuff is trash comparatively but it's good enough for me and and my mom really liked it and she kept that for a really long time and i think that kind of impacted me to the point where i was like you know what i i think i'll draw roses so i guess if there's any real like th sort of brand or pattern it's probably that i probably would say it's the rose but i haven't really had to draw that for much besides that one time there might have been one other set I had to do that for too, but I can't really think of it. Otherwise, it's mainly like building walls and putting furniture together and stuff like that. <laughs> All right, on to the next question. Thanks so much for that question, by the way. On to CDR Imagines. What's one of the most creative adaptations or substitutes that you, oh, sorry, substitutes you've had to use for a set? What is something very commonly used to on set that looks like something else that the viewer would never catch? I'm asking you to share your trade secrets here. So if set dressing slash designers slash constructors are like magicians and never reveal the secrets, I will understand. No, you do not need to worry. I don't have to hold these kind of secrets. So hmm, that's actually a really interesting question. For the most part, we typically will just use what we need to use. However, I think the most creative one was the one that I've actually mentioned in a video in the past. I never would have guessed that this is something that they do in movies and television shows and even music videos sometimes, but it makes so much sense to me now that I know it's what they do. But when you have a cup with ice in it, like a glass with ice, where they have a drink in there with ice, more often than not, you can just take a little ball of saran wrap, just take some saran wrap, ball it up, throw it on into the drink, and you're probably thinking, that looks so stupid. But when you look at it from a distance, like if you're looking at it really up close, you can tell it's saran wrap. But if you look at a distance, especially if it's not just water, if there's like a color to the drink, it looks like ice. 
right? And you'd think to yourself, like, that's silly. Why not just use ice? But the thing you're not thinking about is that when the drinks get too cold, it builds up condensation on the cup and it can ruin a take because it's not going to look the same as the first time because somebody put their hand on it or whatever. Then there's a handprint on it and all that kind of stuff. So we often will just put in saran wrap balls, which is a really simple change. It's not a very in-depth one, but it's simple. The other ones that I can think of would be things like brick walls. You can actually buy an eight by four panel that is wood on the back with a, a textured brick wall on one side. And then you just build up a frame, you staple it to the wall, and it looks like you got a brick wall. If you need to, you can color them, you can make it look a little bit more in depth and, and make it look a little bit more realistic just by adding a bit of paint. But yeah, when you see brick walls and stuff in a lot of shoots, unless they're shooting it on location, those are fake. <laughs> I, I wish I could think of a better one. I, I wish I could think of something a little bit more creative than that, but the ice one still bro still breaks my mind a little bit when I think about it because it's just something that I never thought about. Yeah, you'll have to forgive me. My my memory is not super great, and I'm I'm kind of blanking on any other ones because for the most part, we typically will use pretty much just props that already look like they would, other than like the the simple ones that are like plastic knives. Or like rubber knives or whatever so that people don't actually get cut on set or swords or fake guns or anything like that you know those would be the other ones that are pretty obvious but yeah you never know i mean they, we've actually made a lamp like a lampshade that has holes in it once that is like a rotating lamp that we used the the inside cylinder of a really large paper towel roll and we just unrolled all the paper towel so that we had this nice thick cardboard tube. And then we just cut stars and moon shapes out of it and painted it to make it look just like a lampshade. So that when the light was on, it would project all these stars and moons out onto the room. So that was another pretty cool one as well. I don't know if that kind of answers the question. Hopefully it did. But thanks for the question. All right, next one. SJM asked... If time and resource isn't an issue, what kind of content do you want to do slash make slash cover full time? And did you say you wanted to get into acting? Awesome, awesome question. First off, yes, I do want to be an actor. That was the goal coming out here. However, I'm actually really loving making YouTube videos. And then also, like I've said in the past and pretty much all my videos, I stream on Twitch. And the reason I liked acting is because it's a way that I get to entertain people. It's a way that I get to influence people's lives in a positive manner. And I'm doing that on YouTube right now. You, hopefully this is entertaining. But when I do my reactions and stuff, it's me getting a chance to enter into your life, add a little positivity and react to something. And it's hopefully entertaining. I still want to do acting. I've actually written a script that I would love to make one day. And... Um, yeah, I would love I'd love to be an actor, but uh, it's it's kind of tough. I I can't get anybody to represent me right now, which is also pretty frustrating. And uh I don't have all that many credits to my name, which is probably why I'm having such a hard time doing it. But unfortunately, you have to go through the commercial game and the background game, and I stand out too much because I'm a rather large man. I'm on the taller side. I'm also pretty big and buff and a little bit chubby sometimes too <laughs> trying to work on that but i'm also a big redhead guy with long hair now too and even before i had long hair i still stuck out like a sore thumb so a lot of the times when i get booked onto stuff i don't really get a chance to because they'll say hey that guy sticks out too much he needs to be out of the shot also in terms of commercials and stuff they're looking for people who look like the average american so currently it is more ethnically ambiguous people they're looking for a majority of. It used to be the uh, the white white people with brown hair and blonde hair because that's what an average American looked like in the eyes of the production world at that point. Or I guess in the eyes of Hollywood's industry and whatnot. 
But now that like there's a lot more awesome representation of different cultures and, and people, which is the best. It's awesome. I love it. I freaking love it. Um, now they're looking for a little bit more ethnically ambiguous is what they call it. <laughs> and I'm not. <laughs> so great for society, not great for me. <laughs> Um, but in terms of what do I want to do here on this channel, ideally, I want to get to a spot where I can start making videos a lot more frequently. I would probably like to continue doing it the way that I'm doing it right now, except I'd like to add in a third day of the week where I would put out four videos and then also maybe once a week or maybe once every other week. I'd like to get back to reacting to films and television shows. It's just those videos take a lot longer for me to make than the music video reactions. So I would need more time to be able to do it. So ideally I'd be making money on here so that I wouldn't have to work outside of this. And then I can put the focus into making those videos and editing them and doing all the work that I have to do in order to make those videos. So, most ideal that would be kind of what I'd like to do there and then eventually honestly too like I'd be down to react to other things as well I don't know what that would look like just yet but I would like to find a way to branch out into other things I guess I'm not really sure I haven't thought too deeply about it to be honest but I want to keep growing, you know, I don't want to get stuck doing the same old things every time. I want this to be an interactive channel. I like that you guys are, are offering me up different things to watch and stuff. And, um, yeah, I'm also considering making a Patreon later on as well, which would be more like probably like doing like the BTS, uh, run show. They're like, they're not sitcoms. They're, uh, variety shows and stuff that they did and a lot more of their like behind the scenes videos would probably be put up there but at the same time i i, I do kind of struggle with it where i feel like i want to be able to put the the content out there so everybody can see and i don't want it to i don't know i don't want people to be left out because they would have to pay you know what i mean and that makes me feel like i don't i don't know i don't want to feel like i'm taking advantage of people by putting a paywall up for some content so that's why i haven't really i don't know people have asked about the patreon if, I, if i'm gonna do it or not but i'm not i don't know morally it almost feels wrong doing it but at the same time too i understand like I, if i want to do this full time like i need to make ways to make money <laughs> as well so i don't know it's it's one of those things that there's a lot of stuff that i would like to do it's just a matter of, of figuring out a way to do it and then also figuring out new kind of content to make because I want to keep growing as a as a as a as a reactor as a streamer and just as an entertainer so yeah that's a really great question thanks so much next question Diana Mangubat I love to watch reactors use their expertise to review BTS videos. That is specifically how I found your channel. I imagine there is, are many artistically frustrated individuals just striving to get into your career field. Tell us more about what got you into set dressing and do you still love it? What would your advice be to someone starting from the very beginning in this career field? Is it another all about who you know types of career? You mentioned that you liked making YouTube content and hope to do more. Uh, would you care to share what your vision or goals are? Cool, so we've already kind of answered some of these questions already, so I'm not gonna go too in depth on any of those. But in terms of this career field, yes, it's very much a who you know basis my recommendation for if you're getting into this field and you really want to get into this field get in touch with one of the local schools students are making films all the time and a lot of the times they're using genuine art directors and production designers and stuff like that and the faster that you can make connections into this world the easier it is to get work and then on top of it work hard and work fast 
and also do the work right the first time <laughs> learn the craft learn all the tools learn all that kind of stuff because the more that you know before going into it the easier it is going to be to do the work so you also asked if i if uh what tell me about what got you into such interesting like i said i kind of fell into it however i really do like the idea of what i do i love being able to put things together i love seeing when we get the set put together and it's all done however i wouldn't say that i necessarily love doing it i've unfortunately had quite a few injuries in my life so my body is kind of falling apart at this point and this job is very very physically demanding on top of the fact that the hours are atrocious they don't really care as long as you get it done so i don't necessarily love what i do but i do love the process if you if you get what i mean i don't like the the physical act of having to do it but i love i love building stuff i really do i think it's really fun but like it's it's tough it's really really tough on my body and uh like i got a bad back i got bad knees i have a bad elbow oh man i've had so many concussions and all this kind of stuff and it really does hold you back quite a bit and it's it's disappointing and i wish that my body was better at this point but um i didn't really take care of myself growing up i uh i did a lot of different activities and stuff and i never really stretched i never really allowed my body full times to heal when it did get hurt so i was just constantly aggravating it i also grew up with no insurance for a very long time i actually got insurance for like the first time in like 15 years this past year <laughs> so going to the doctor was out of the question for most of that uh unless there was like a really really serious injury and uh yeah so i just i just wasn't smart about it so if you're gonna be if you want to do this and you want to get into this be smart about it be smarter than i am about it because like i said like you can totally do this you can get your set hours you can you or sorry you can get your union hours and get into the union get paid better and have better quality of work and all that which is awesome i personally work as a, a non-union person right now but be smart about it take care of yourself stretch go to the oh let's i will say this it's like almost impossible to go to the gym when you're working this job but eat right <laughs> eat right take care of yourselves please if you really want to do this it is a very fun job however uh the it just it's it it's really taking a toll on my on my body so for me it is what it is however i do love getting to talk about it and i love understanding how things are made and all that kind of stuff too so overall i do really like the career i just don't want to stay in it the rest of my life you know what i'm saying i want to be an entertainer and then i also already talked about my vision and goals so we're gonna get on to the next question next question is from rex as a set dresser are you happy with your job how long have you been a set dresser how did you become one have you had any issues regarding the one you made and seemed like a copy of another or anything related to your work so a couple great questions in there are you happy with your job kind of <laughs> i will say this i get to work with some really awesome people it's just the way that production works it's it's not like most careers you work really long hours i mean literally when you sign on to the job you get paid a day rate for a 12-hour day so already you're already starting with a minimum of a 12 hour day work day so it is nice sometimes filming will go short or whatever so if you get let out early you get paid for the 12 hours regardless but most of the time you end up having to work overtime and yeah you get paid a little bit extra for overtime but overtime is going into 13 14 15 16 17 and i've even done an 18 hour work day before and it's all physical labor it's taxing and it kind of sucks sometimes you work with producers who are awesome and they take care of you the director is awesome they take care of you and sometimes you work with people who are just not and they don't care about you they don't take care of their their crews and all that kind of stuff and it sucks so there's a, there's some really great 
crews to be a part of, and there's also some really bad ones. I've been doing set dressing for about three years now. Set dressing is definitely the easiest out of the art jobs, I would say, because it's mainly decorating and making sure that props are where they need to be, the paint's all done correctly and all that kind of stuff. It's probably the least physically demanding, so if I was going to stick to one, I would definitely want to stick to set dressing. You're also the person who, when a take is done and we have to reset to go back to what they call one, which is the first frame, then you're the one who comes in, you reset all the props, and you make it look exactly the way that it was for the first second of the take. So yeah, that's another great question. I've never had any issues with anyone commenting on us, copying others. In fact, we've used other sets and just redecked them just to make them look different. In fact, there's actually a, uh, an interesting shoot we did on a short film recently where we actually used the bar from New Girl, the TV show, and we just, I don't know, changed a couple bottles around. We didn't really do that much to it. It just made it look different. They just shot it at a slightly different angle. Bada boom, bada bing, it's a bar. <laughs> no one will know, you know? But hey, great question. All right, next question from Ajiniwi. Ajiniwi. Hope I said that right. Sorry if I didn't. Please share at least three awesome char characteristics of yours. Don't be shy. <sighs> All right. I will say I've been looking at these questions all week long and I've been trying to think of answers for a lot of them and uh, sometimes it can be kind of tough. So three awesome characteristics about yourself. I think that I am a very good friend. If you are somebody that I love and trust and I consider you one of my best friends, I will go above and beyond for you no matter what. You basically become family to me. And I think that I hold friendship to a different standard than most people do. And that's only evidenced by the way that my friends are and the way that we view each other. So I think that's something that's kind of awesome and unique. Um, I think another characteristic could be them. This is so hard. <laughs> another characteristic. I think I'm uh, my my humor is also both really good and really bad all at the same time and i think that's what makes it awesome because <laughs> i i love very witty comedy i love the little thing the subtle nuances sometimes in comedy i think that even just like the minor little things that people can do with like body language or just a slight word or like a little thing under their breath or whatever it's super super funny i love a good witty response as well but at the same time i think puns and dad jokes are also hilarious <laughs> i know a lot of people don't like them but i love them i think they're so funny so i think my humor is also another great one and then last but not least i think i am a good encourager I personally love hearing about people doing stuff and then getting hyped with them in their successes. I never really view other people's achievements as like, well, what that could have been me or anything like that. I've always looked at it as I'm just happy you're doing well. Honestly, I think that's why I like BTS so much is because like they've been through some things and they're pushing through and they are striving. But when my friends tell me about stuff that they're doing and it, the success that they're having with it, even if it's a minor thing, I love it. And even if they don't notice the minor things, I'll point it out to them and be like, yo, but look at this. This is where you were and here's where you are. And look at it. It's like, yeah, it might be a little change, but it's a step in the right direction. And honestly, it gets me so pumped up and I really, really love doing that kind of stuff. And I think it's great, but it also kind of sucks sometimes because then it's like I see my friends who have such potential and they want to do something, but they just keep getting in their own way and... I want to encourage them to keep pushing and, and keep going and like help guide them in the right direction. But you know, there's only so much you can do for other people. And then at the same time too, I have to remember I do that too. 
I'm constantly getting in my own way. I constantly don't believe in myself and it's a struggle. And knowing that other people are going through it too is hard. It's hard for me. I don't know why I don't care as much that I'm going through it as much as my friends are. And it sucks and I hate seeing it. I hate seeing my friends struggle like that. And I wish they'd all succeed at everything that they're doing. And honestly, too, I love hearing strangers tell me about stuff. I used to drive for Uber and people would tell me stuff sometimes about like what they're doing in life. And like, oh, I just made this move because I'm going to be doing this and this. And like, I've already met this person and like this is happening. And I'm like, yo, hell yeah, let's go, dude. So I don't know, man. I love it. I don't care if you're a stranger. I don't, I don't care if you're telling me the good things that are happening in life. I'm stoked. Because it makes me feel good, and I and I love it. I love hearing that you guys are doing well. <laughs> Hopefully that all makes sense. Hopefully those are, are three good characteristics. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So next question. They also thank you for the question, by the way. That was really great. That was a, a shockingly tough one. <laughs> next question. A.G. asked, you said you wanted to be into entertainment. What is your dream role or gig? And do you have a favorite BTS member yet? Dream role. Easy peasy. I want anything to do with Marvel. I want to be in one of those movies with a speaking role. I would love to be a villain. It would be very cool to be a superhero, but I would love to be a villain. I think I could do it really well. I would die. I would die. I would pay them to put me in the movie. I wouldn't even care. They don't have to pay me a damn cent. Marvel, if you're listening, please cast me as something. I will do it for free. I don't even care. I don't even care. I don't care that people are getting tired of Marvel movies. I don't care that there's superhero fatigue. I am about it. I love it, and I don't care. Who knows it? Marvel is the best. Also, I would love to do something with Star Wars, even though Star Wars is kind of it's getting a little rough. Get a little rough lately. What can we say? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But Marvel, that's my jam. I don't care. I'm a nerd. I love it. Ooh, also, it would be really cool to voice over for any anime character. Just saying. I love anime as well. It is what it is. <laughs> oh, who's your favorite BTS member? Um, I don't know if I have a favorite yet uh i will say this i'll say i'll say this i'll give you two because i think they're all incredibly talented i know that's a cop-out answer or whatever but i think suga is probably my favorite because i love i like his rapping the most and i think it's so cool that he like produces most of the music and then in terms of singing i think i like jungkook the best actually somebody commented on one of the videos recently and they're like you say every single time you hear him sing you're like oh man that voice and i didn't realize i liked it so much until they commented that so i'm guessing that he's definitely in my favorites he's that dude's got a voice of an angel <laughs> so we'll go sugar and jungkook okay <laughs> those those two are my favorite right now i guess i don't know i love them all but i i think those two <laughs> are probably my favorite uh all right a uh, gucci bang twice asked does set dressers get paid well no <laughs> uh actually no it's a, it's kind of a yes or no it depends is really the question some productions you're on have a higher budget. Some productions have low budget. So on the low budget ones, most of the time they won't go lower than like $300 for a 12 hour day. Seems pretty good. But I mean, I've been on sets too where you're a set dresser and you're getting paid upwards of like five, $600 for a 12 hour day. So it really all depends on the gig. It depends on the production. It depends on, also it depends on what kind of production you're working on, like music videos or even doing stills for uh, for like magazines or internet ads and stuff like that. Stills are just pictures. Those 
work typically 10 hour days rather than the 12 hour days so they'll they'll adjust your rate accordingly to that so you get paid a little bit less actually more often than not technically you'll get paid a little more because they'll usually stick to around the same amount but it's just you work a little less during the day but overall it's good but like i said it's all word of mouth so it's really hit or miss you're very much a freelancer so sometimes i will be working all the time like there's there was a time i worked i think 26 days straight without a day off and then there's other times where i've had there's one time i actually had a month and a half of no work where not a single job came up so it happens it happens sometimes you're looking for work and then sometimes you also have to say no to work because you so many people are asking all at once you know so it's it's very hit or miss so it's a very tough field to be in it's there's very much no security in your paychecks so you have to be kind of smart with your money or be like me and just get yourself in a ton of debt and not be able to pay it all back <laughs> all right last question before we're done here tonight what is your favorite thing about your job for me it's always gonna be the people i know that sounds silly i am very much a people person i love people so much i studied people in college doing psychology and i love working with someone else in the art department as well and we just will be making jokes having a good time having some laugh while we're working and then also complaining about the job because that's always part of it <laughs> if you're not complaining on the job i don't know what you're doing because we all have a love-hate relationship with this industry i couldn't imagine doing anything else besides actually being an entertainer at this point so i mean if the youtube stuff takes off i will definitely stop being a set dresser or art department person that's the other thing too i just say set dresser for the videos but i literally do like every role in the whole art department from art pa set dresser carpenter art director so it's just that would be a way too long title <laughs> to put in there so set dresser makes the most sense to most people so that's why i say it in the videos but yeah working with people i work with a lot of really great people who call me back and we go on to jobs together with so a lot of them i become friends with i even hang out with some of them outside of work as well actually one of my best friends i was just at his wedding just a week ago he's uh i met him through work we were working together and we are actually we wrote a movie together as well so i mean he's one of the best people i know and i met him through work and i i i love it i love i love making friendships on work sites and i love oh, i love when i can crack jokes because also i will say a little little trade secret of being a jokester or a comedian or whatever is i have some jokes that work really well but all my friends who've heard them before are tired of it so when a new person comes in i can say the same jokes and then they're not gonna know and they're gonna find it funny and then i get to laugh again so it's a, it's a great little secret but um guys also sorry i didn't even say katie thank you for that question very much i appreciate it for everybody who wrote in a question i really do appreciate it i hope that you enjoyed this i hope that you like this i'm trying to figure out what i want to do when we hit 5,000 subs and I think I have an idea of what I might do because everybody keeps asking me to watch the dance practices for these videos. So I was thinking about making a really long, big video of all the dance practices of all the music videos that I've reacted to. And that's both BTS and the other K-pop, I'm sorry, the, the K-pop groups that I also reacted to. BTS is not K-pop. <clears throat> but... If that sounds interesting to you, let me know. I think that's what we might do for it. It's going to be over an hour long video. That's for sure. <laughs> so it's going to be a long one. But uh, yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching this. Thank you so much for being a part of my life. Thank you for changing my life so much. I mean, it, it doesn't feel it. It probably doesn't feel like much, especially because we're still a relatively small channel. But uh, I said it in that last video that I just I can't believe so many of you guys want to be part of this and be part of my life and uh, Do all this kind of stuff. So thank you. Thank you so much again Everybody who is subbing to the channel. Thank you for everybody making suggestions Thanks for the people who are liking the videos and doing all that kind of stuff Thanks for anybody who's coming over to twitch too because it's it's been a lot of fun 
And honestly, like, yeah, I might not be in a financially great situation, but the fact that I get to entertain you guys literally brings life to my body. So thank you. Thank you so much for being here. And I hope you guys have an awesome and great week. Stay aggressively positive. I love you. And thank you for being here for real. Guys, have a great night. I love you. Bye. Mwah! You thought I was going to be really serious at the end, didn't you? No.